start off, um, we'll speak about the current status quo, um, what is currently used for real type solutions, and that is uh, a general purpose cable reel. Uh, you see a photo of that in the lower left hand corner. I assume that uh, most of, if not all of you are familiar with these, may have them in your facilities. Uh, pretty common um, old technology that's been around. The core uh, principle of a conventional cable reel is a slip ring. That's what allows it to facilitate the rotary motion of the cable uh, and pass that electrical current through the rotary junction. We'll talk about uh, how a slip ring works, just the, the basics of it. We have a, a graphic on the right hand side of the screen that shows the electrical circuit that's used with a slip ring. So the circuit begins in the, the lower right hand corner where the call out for source harness from stationary member. That's, uh, you see the, the red and the white wire, that is the essentially the incoming current from whatever the source is, whether the control cabinet, the PLC, whatever it is. Those leads come in and they branch off and the next step in the circuit is the connection between the brushes and the source harness. So the source harness, the wires from the source, come in and terminate to, in this case, it's two carbon brushes that you see that are kind of the gray squares in, in the center of the screen. The next step in the circuit is the ring core stack. You'll see those gold colored rings in the, in the center of the unit. There's one ring per conductor. So in this case, we have two conductors in this circuit. Um, we have two conductor rings. So the carbon brush will contact the ring and that's how the electrical current makes it through the rotary junction. So as one member spins and the other member stays stationary, the brush maintains contact with that ring and the current flows from static end to rotational end. The next step in the circuit is the connection between the functional harness and the ring leads. So each one of those rings in the ring core has a wire lead on it that then is terminated to whatever the output side is. We then see the output side come all the way down to the center of the tube on the bottom. So that essentially completes the circuit and you'll see that uh, we have the last thing called out is just a, a mounting bracket that mounts the rotational piece um, to whatever the end effector is, camera system, pickup arm, whatever it is that's at the end of the rotational circuit. So that works fairly well for certain types of energy, power, 24 volt control, things of that nature, uh, work fairly well through a slip ring type solution, but as we'll talk about as we go further into the presentation, there are certain types of energy that really do not react very well to slip rings. Some of those are high uh, sensitive data, high speed data, high fidelity audio, fiber optic, things like that do not uh, are not easily run through a slip ring type solution. The conventional cable reel also is typically restricted to running only one cable per reel. So if you have two or three or four or five cables, you need that many reels. So the cost of that and the space required to implement a cable reel solution definitely uh, grows pretty quickly as you start to add additional cables. It's also a fixed configuration. In this particular example that we have on the right, that's a two conductor slip ring. This is designed and engineered to be used with only two conductors of a certain voltage and current. So that's pretty much fixed that if the electrical requirements of this application were to change, the entire cable reel would need to be replaced and changed out to facilitate a different electrical package. Well, the solution to that, the solution to those shortcomings is the IGUS eSpool. Now you see a couple of different variants pictured on the screen here. The way that IGUS eSpool works is it uses a standard IGUS linear cable carrier, which I assume many of you are, are very familiar with. You'll see a, a 1400 energy chain wound up on that center drum in the eSpool. And then it's combined with a patented IGUS product known as the twister band. The twister band allows us to eliminate the slip ring that is found in many conventional cable reels and solve many of the problems that uh, slip rings can potentially cause. So next up, we have a couple of videos that will uh, do a better job of explaining exactly how the slip ring works. It's kind of a unique motion that's uh, best shown by video. So we'll show two videos that will uh, show how the twister band goes together and how it articulates to uh, solve the, uh, the slip ring problem. So the first one will show the construction of the slip ring. It is a link to link design, just like many of our other energy chains. It can be lengthened and shortened as required. It's also openable, as many of our other cable carriers are, to allow you to change or replace cables as needed. Uh, even if there is a connector on the end of it or they have something large at the end, it's openable, the cables can be slid in and then taken back out in the event that you need to change or uh, replace a cable. 
So next up, we'll show some uh, real world video of some uh, twisted bands on e schools in action. These videos are taken inside of our test lab at our, our headquarters in Cologne, Germany. So you'll see the twisted band moving in essentially a, a, a conical path around the center shaft. It will essentially roll the cable around that shaft and allow the spool to travel up and down. So that goes to show how exactly the, the twister man moves. It essentially allows for um, a, a complete home run of cable. So from whatever the source is to the rotating member is one run of cable. There's no intermediate breaks, no brushes, nothing to introduce uh, electrical noise or, or points of failure. Uh, one just single run of cable that's run through the e-school all the way to the end of the line. So oh, now we'll talk about the standard offering that we can uh, supply eSpool in, some of the different filling capacities and travel distance that we offer. So first we'll talk about the full size or standard eSpools. We offer those in two variants, a single twister band and a double twister band. You'll see the single twister band model uh, up in the upper right hand corner of the slide and the double twister band is in the, the lower portion of the slide. The reason why we feed with either one versus two twister bands is for additional cable carrying capacity. So if we feed from one side, we get a certain amount of capacity. If we feed from both sides with two twister bands, we're able to more or less double that capacity. So the full size uses uh, full size with the single twister band uses a 14080-100 energy chain that's uh, roughly seven eighths by three inches of uh, cable carrying capacity inside window uh, in the cable carrier. And it's available in a four, a seven, and a 14 meter travel. It's also available with either a standard or a heavy duty spring. So we're able to dial in the amount of retraction force that's required for the given application by having a couple of different spring options. We also offer the same uh, four, seven, and 14 meter travels in the double twister band version. That uses a 1400-125-100 chain, which is roughly seven eighths by five inches of space. Then we have a couple of smaller sizes. Uh, we have one using a 08-050-048 chain. Uh, that is roughly 5 eighths by 2 inches, and that's available in a 4 meter travel. We also have a SPC e-spool, uh, which uses a single twister band. That's the one pictured in the upper left-hand side of the, the graphic. That is designed to function partly like a cable reel and, and partly like an e-spool. Uh, it takes a single cable, and it wraps around a drum without any energy chain, but it pairs that with a twister band to eliminate the slip ring. This product was specifically de designed for use with robot pendant cables. Robot pendant cables are, are one of the types of cables that do not react very well to being terminated into a slip ring. So this product is was designed for that need. Customers that want to pull out their robot pendant, teach the robot something, and then allow it to wind back up in a, a, a neat fashion. But it certainly can be used for any other uh, application where the uh, extension and retraction of one single cable without a slip ring is desirable. Uh, and then we also have a mini e-spool, which is uh, the smallest of what we offer, uses an 045-30-028 energy chain and is available with a two meter travel. The majority of these e-spools are available in left and right hand configurations. So you see the two examples. Uh, up on the screen there. What that is useful for is that if you have an application where you want to tuck the energy chain close up against a wall or an obstruction, or if you want to have two of them back to back, uh, two of them side by side with the energy chains close touching one another, that is able to be, uh, it's, it's possible to install that way by choosing a left or a right or a combination of the both. And then just reiterating the, uh, the filling area, we have options for uh, 5 eighths by 2, 7 eighths by 3, 7 eighths by 5, also in metric 15 by 50, 21 by 80, 21 by 125. 
We can certainly facilitate larger custom solutions. IGUS does have a, a full engineering department and we have realized a, a number of custom solutions with these pools, uh, both larger filling capacity, longer strokes, uh, different colors, plenty of different uh, custom modifications. And we certainly are able to support uh, applications that don't fit into the standard offering. Uh, this is just to represent what's uh, available off the shelf. Uh, Rob will go deeper into some of the custom solutions that we're able to offer uh, in a few slides. So uh, just to recap that, we'll uh, compare and contrast e-spools versus cable reels. So the e-spool, as we know, uh, will allow for home run wiring of the cables from point to point with no intermediate breaks. The cable reel uses a slip ring, which does have multiple terminations, has a, essentially two cables, one from the source to the slip ring and one from the slip ring to the end effector. That gives you double the amount of terminations and double the points of failure. There's also some maintenance involved in a cable reel. The brushes that we saw in the uh, slip ring diagram, those do wear down over time. They do need to be replaced. There are springs that keep the brushes held tight to the conductor stack, the ring stack. Those need to be replaced as well. It can be somewhat of a dirty uh, uh, endeavor to try and change those brushes after they've disintegrated into uh, a powder inside of the slip ring. It's also important to note that that maintenance requires de-energizing the system. It is a live electrical component, so the system does need to be shut down while that maintenance occurs. So that is some downtime to whatever the machine is while that slip ring is being worked on. There is also the potential for signal loss due to electrical noise and poor continuity between the slip ring. We see that a lot with the high fidelity audio with the data as well. And we also have the limitation of one cable per reel. Going back to eSpool, we are able to allow uh, multiple cables in a single system, limited only by the capacity in the linear e-chain. And we also call the, the eSpool maintenance freight. Uh, there is one uh, service item on the eSpool, and that's the coil spring pack. You see the coil spring pack in the left-hand side of the picture in the slide. That is inherent in any any solution that would use a coil spring, uh, spring steel, the uh, material properties of it, it just will lose its mechanical strength over a certain period of time. So anything that uses a coil spring does need to be exchanged. But what's important to note is with the e spool maintenance, it does not, it's not an electrical component, it's purely mechanical, so it does not require de-energizing the system. There's a, you'll see a worm gear on the, uh, in the photo. It's a very simple and safe procedure to change the spring pack on an e spool. You remove a couple of screws, you use the worm gear to take the tension off of the spring. I guess supplies a replacement spring pack. It's completely enclosed in a steel housing, so there's never any chance of a spring jumping out or exploding as uh, can potentially happen with some other designs. Uh, the Igus design is very safely enclosed inside of a housing. We supply a new spring pack, it gets mounted to the shaft, the worm gear is used to retension the system, and then the system is able to be put back in service without ever de-energizing the system. A couple of more compare and contrasting between uh, e-spools and cable reels. It's important to uh, know that uh, e-spool is adaptable if your controls change. So if you have, for example, if you're running a certain size motor and down the line you want to upgrade your machine, you want to increase the size of the motor, needs more current, a higher voltage, whatever the case may be. With e-spool, all you need to do is pull out the cable that is currently feeding the motor and replace it with the cable that you need to feed your new motor. Of course, we have to be aware of the bend radius concerns and the size concerns. So there does have to be available space within the linear e-chain to allow for that. But as long as that space exists, all that needs to be changed is the cable. With a cable reel, uh, the slip ring is designed for a fixed current voltage and conductor count. You'll see on the right hand side, uh, a number of different slip rings. You will see the one in the back is designed for maybe 18, 20 conductors at a lower current and a lower voltage. The one in the uh, kind of on the left hand side with three large conductor rings, that's designed for three conductors of a fairly high current. But each one of those is, is a very fixed configuration. And if ever the customer would like to deviate from whatever that configuration is, say they want to add a vision system down the line or additional sensors, internet connectivity, any of the things that may be desired to be added to machines down the line, the entire cable reel will need to be changed to facilitate a new type of slip ring. You also see that uh, different cable types require different types of cable reels. Usually they're made by different suppliers and, and operate slightly differently. In the, the graphic on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see 
theoretical application that requires a data cable, a pneumatic hose, and a control cable. And you'll see three different types of cable rails, one for the data, one for the hose, one for the control cable. Those would need to be procured theoretically from three different suppliers to be three different learning curves for the maintenance personnel that need to work on this. Versus all of that being combined into a single e spool, taking the data cable, the pneumatic line, and the control cable, laying them side by side into an e spool, having one supplier, one point of contact, and one system to learn and work on. So, with that, I'll turn it over to Rob, who will speak about the cables and also about some of the custom solutions that we're able to offer uh, within the e spool product line. Thanks a lot, Dan. Thanks a lot, everyone, for uh, for joining us. So, just want to go over some of the the cable specs that we generally work with when we're dealing with these spools. Um, the first thing is when we talk about shielded cables. Uh, the one thing we always want to make sure is that um, there is a lot of torsion going on within the the twister band. So, we want to make sure our cables are torsion rated, and so we want to make sure all shielded cables have a spiral shield around it just because uh, with the torsion in there we want to make sure there's no noise uh, no breaks in the uh, the shielding that can cause any uh, any effects within uh, with, within what's going on so uh, we generally recommend the the robotic cables I guess there's a whole line of them from power control data fiber optics uh, that uh, that do have uh, spiral shields uh, within the cables the next portion is unshielded cables Generally, we like to work with TPE jacketed cables, but the main point is that it has to be torsion rated. So generally, we're looking at TPE jacketed cables um, with some sort of torsion rated as well. Uh, it goes along with the robotic cables as well. But um, so anything that, uh, that that's going within the twister band, we want to make sure it it will be able to, to handle the uh, the twisting and turning within within inside of it. So um, the nice thing about uh, working with an e-spool, we're not limited to the types of cables. So we can use coax cables, fiber optic cables, unshielded shielded cables water lines pneumatic lines hydraulic lines um, there's also all types of opportunities for different uh different types of power control data that can go in there and it can all go into the the same e-spool a lot of times um, the some of the the factors we always take into consideration are the the od of the cables the largest od that should go in there is a 17 millimeter bend radius but it's not necessarily just the od but we always want to take into consideration the bend radius of the cable so Within the twister band, uh, the, the, the bend radius uh, ranges from 44 millimeters to 77 millimeters. So some uh, sometimes we look at cables that are larger than the 17 millimeters and we look to see if we can split them into single conductors, smaller uh, smaller gauge uh, size to, to lower the OD and the bend radii of what's going in there. But we try and find uh, the, the best solution for the application and, and that it's not just the e spool, it's also the cables that are going in there. Next, I want to talk about some of the special offers. We, we talked about our standard e spools, which which come with uh, with our energy chains with crossbars on it, but we're not limited to that. We uh, we can also put lids on it where we have a full tube system, um, so it's fully enclosed, which can be done. We can also do it where it's uh, it's a half tube where there's lids on one side and crossbars on the other side. Um, we can also uh, put a reverse bend chain in there so the chain can actually bend in multiple directions back and forth uh, so it's not just limited to a standard uh, standard i guess e chain which would be our 1400 series chain there's a whole bunch of, of variables from that not just the the different types of chains it also can be different colors we've we've worked with customers who've used uh yellow each yellow e chains um white e chains and not just that change in the housing um, we've had customers request stainless steel uh, housing units as well so there's a lot of variables that can go in to, to adjust the, the system at hand. We talk about travels. I know our standard travel goes up to 14 meter. We've actually worked on systems up to 50 meters in an e spool. So if, if there's anything beyond the 14 meters, as Dan mentioned earlier, we have a full engineering department and uh, we can work on longer solution, larger solutions. The idea is to find the right solution for the application. So our standard offering does go up to 14 meters, but as I mentioned, we, we have worked on systems that have gone up to 50 meters, uh, 50 meters in length. So um, there's there's uh, quite a few options from that side of things. Um, the other part of it is that uh, it doesn't have to be just our standard linear chains as well. We have something called a tri spool where we're using our triflex, which we generally use in robotic applications, but this is for 3D motion. So uh, we've had customers call in and request an application that's that's moving down and then it's going to take a right hand turn or uh, there's going to be some torsion going on. It's going to be rotating around and we, we've worked with our triflex product line. Uh, in, a, in an e-spool application to give them that 3D motion as well. So um, it pretty much, uh, it, it would be, a, it, it is a, 
uh, a specialized solution. So we want to make sure it's the right size Triflex. Uh, it ranges from 30 millimeter up to 125 millimeter in the sizes, but uh, we want to make sure it's the right size that would fit for your application. So that's another type of uh, different solution we can use within our e-spools as well. So this is one that uh, that we worked through, and this is a 60 millimeter size on the on the the tri spool as well. We wanted to give you a visual of it so you can see what it would look like. It looks just similar to like a, a standard e spool. Yeah, you know, it coils up uh, within that drum and everything, and then when it's pulled down, it can ro really rotate in any uh, any direction that it needs to. It move in any direction. But this is a this is a visual of what it would look like if uh if you're looking at into the tri spool uh version of it so we want to show a video of some customer applications different solutions that have been used uh in e spools like for instance this is more of like a, a pick and place as you can see where it's mounted overhead it's moving down to some racks where uh, they might be pulling some product line over um just so you can see a different type of application uh that's used as well so then you get ones that have like telescopic uh telescopic uh booms any type of mass that's moving up where it's mounted down below but it's protruding out if it is going to go outside we always want to take environmental concerns into a, into consideration as well it's like anything going outside here's another one where it's more of like a, going around a, a circle so 360 degrees mounted on its side to do the full rotation and then rotate it back as well uh so you know the just changing the orientation can uh, can make make a solution as well and then we've worked with overhead crane companies as well on uh, on some hoist to deliver down and, uh, and and move back up as well. So all types of industries, uh, the theater industry is a very popular one as well. So the East Pool has a, a specific design to it that can accomplish a lot of uh, solutions. So if it's something that might work for you, just let us know, uh, our territory managers, Dan, myself, we can definitely work through uh, through the progress of it as well. So, and lastly, we've been talking about eSpools, but we also want to talk about some uh, another solution that we have is which we call a zigzag as well. So, generally, we look at we're looking for the best solution for your application. So, sometimes eSpools, as I mentioned, there are some limitations: OD sizes, bed radii, uh, you know, fill package. Um, so, we we try and find the best solution. So, um, sometimes we will look at zigzags as another solution as well. So, with the zigzags, they do need uh, need gravity on its side. So, a lot of times they have to be mounted the box has to be mounted on the ground and moving up but there's ways to work from the ceiling to the ground as if the box box is moving um, we generally work up to 35 meter uh, travels theoretically the fill package is unlimited so you don't have to use torsion rated cables you, you can use any of the lists that i mentioned before as well the the ods uh isn't really a big issue you can just go with larger chains from that side but it's all based around the the cable package and the the space restrictions so this is another solution if a uh, east pool isn't the best solution for your application as well just want to give an example of one uh this is our this is a solution that we worked with at the kaufman center out in missouri uh where we used a, a zigzag solution uh where you see it mounted to the truck and where the box is actually moving. So we want to give you a visual of what it would look like in one of the solutions that I guess did provide. Thank you everybody for uh, taking time to uh, attend this webinar. If you have uh, any questions, feel free to uh, address them to Rob, myself, or also uh, reach out to your local IGUS representative. We'll be happy to help you on site if necessary. Thank you for your time and uh, thank you for your interest in IGUS. Have a nice day.